what if you trained as a lawyer and you worked as a lawyer and built a wonderful career, even practicing law in different countries, but then decided you wanted to become a romance writer? <laughs> well, the woman you're about to meet did exactly that. And it's amazing. I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest tonight on Boss Up Goddess. This is Tana Jenkins, and she is a romance writer. She's going to be part of the program at the Detroit Writing Room Monday evening, March 1st from 7 to 8.30, talking about writing romance. Welcome, Tana. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. It's good to be here. Good evening, everyone who's watching. <laughs> Thank you. So, Tana, as you know, my show, Boss Up Goddess, is where I interview trailblazing women who share their wisdom to help us all live bigger, better, and bolder. And you're doing that because you had the courage to shift careers from law to romance writing. Can you talk about how you did that? Sure, I'd love to. Um, it it, <clears throat> it was uh, more than a notion, <laughs> you know. As an attorney who's been practice, who was practicing for probably fifteen years, you get to a certain point with your peers and with your salary, where you're pretty comfortable. Yes, you know? yes, and. Um, you're comfortable with the work, you're comfortable with your routine, you're comfortable with your identity as an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, and then to, to move away from that <clears throat> required planning for me. I think it's different for everyone, but for me, it required planning, it required saving, and it required a push. Oh, <laughs> Especially, you know, it wasn't like I was moving from law into accounting or law into another uh, career that had clearly delineated markers, mm -hmm. you know, you know, the path of an artist is yes. just, it's, it's not a very clearly marked path, you no, know, no. Um, there are no guarantees. There are, but your heart is happy and your soul is singing and you're blazing your own trail and you're living your truth and being authentic. And that's what it's all about. And you Absolutely. represent the whole boss up goddess principle in that you wake up one day and you say, wait a minute, this isn't really making me happy. I want to change. I want to do something different, but what and how, but you did it. So you serve as a tremendous example for doing that, Tana. So how did you do it? I love it. I'm so much happier. Okay. So what did I do? I started off joining, I was in New Jersey. I started off, I joined, I think that this was the first step. I joined an organization through my library called Montclair Writers, a tremendous group of people, all ages, all ethnicities, all um, levels of, all levels of writing, you know, all coming from different backgrounds, advertising, education, just you know, a hodgepodge of wonderful people who would get together every Saturday morning and write based on these prompts. And, you know, working out with the prompts really got my creative imagination going and it helped me to build a body of work. And it helped me to start doing the first thing that I needed to do in my mind, which was to call myself to claim it, you know, to Ooh. call myself a writer. Oh, uh, I love that. Wow. Yeah, because you know, so much starts with our minds and the stories we tell ourselves. That's why story is so important. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons why story is so important. Um, so after that, I think my next step, I had a coworker who is also a writer and she had heard about a workshop in New York uh, called Quayley. Quayley is a lit mag and then the director of the mag also offers a workshop for writers of color. So I went to that and started to get more comfortable calling myself a writer. And then the next thing that I did, Yale had a workshop, a summer writing workshop. And by that point in time, I, I had a little between the Saturdays. And I also, there was another writing group. Community is so important. Um, there was another writing group, Bergen County Writers, I was involved with. So those three things together, I had a little writing portfolio and I took it 
And I applied to Yale and I was thinking, I'm never going to get into it. There's no way. Um, But lo and behold, I had applied for literary fiction and I picked romance kind of as a back, back up, you know, I had never read a romance book. And I know I'm not one of those women (laughs) whose mother had like, yes, right. The romance now in my household, romance was frowned upon. They were literary snobs, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, But I, so I applied to Yale, got in, got into the romance class and uh, writer Julia Quinn was the teacher. I hadn't heard about Julia Quinn. Um, I got in there. She was an amazing woman. Some people, she's, her name is much more well-known now because she just had a television show is called Richardson. Yes. She was your teacher. She was my teacher. <laughs> yeah. And, and I get in there. It, it, <laughs> she was awesome too. Oh my really gosh. nice woman. Yeah. So I get into the class and, um, in the weeks prior to the class, I start to read more about the genre and I start to read more about her. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this woman's written like 300 books. I mean, she's a serious author. I can't believe uh-huh. she could be. Um, wow. And yeah, I didn't know what to expect. I go in there and I'm like, she's probably going to be one of those celebrity writers who's here because she liked the name Neil too. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have any big expectations, but I got in there and she was a super warm, friendly, wonderful woman. And we spent the next few weeks together. It was a small class, small core cohort. There were maybe eight or nine of us and the women were just so nurturing and so intelligent and such wonderful writers that I went from reluctant convert to thinking, you know, there I didn't want to write anything else. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Were you still practicing law at the time? I was still practicing law. So getting back to your initial question, what did I do? I started building confidence, you know, like part of the preparation. Wow. Yeah. A part of the preparation was financial, but then uh, maybe a large part of the preparation is also mental, you know, um, giving yourself permission to be more than what I had identified myself, defined myself as, which was an attorney, um, giving myself permission to be a writer who might not start off being a very good writer, you know, because that's one thing, you've been doing something for 15, 20 years, and you achieve a certain level of proficiency to move to another track, you have to start at the beginning Mm -hmm. with the salary, with the commendations. And so you have to give yourself permission to develop and to start at the beginning again. And that's, you know, you get to be 40 something years old and that's kind of uncomfortable. So that was part of it. And then building a network was another big part of it. And building the network helped me also to start to think like a writer, think of myself more as a writer and um, think of myself more as an artist. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I got published and seeing your name in print. Also for me, I, I don't know if everyone is this way, but for me, I really needed that external affirmation and I really needed to like change the channel in my brain so it was really change the channel in your brain and what changed the channel was you were nominated for a very prestigious award so what was that that okay yeah that definitely helped it's a push court and that is an award that is bestowed upon short story writers um and I was nominated for that by an editor at a lit mag that Mensa started. Yeah. And so when somebody from Mensa tells you (laughs) (laughs) 
that your writing is good <laughs> enough to be nominated for a prestigious award. You're like, yes. you're either right, high right. you and like, uh, mm-hmm. I took it. I took it. I said, you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna claim this and really step into this new title. And oh. so shortly after that, I moved into full-time writing. Oh, beautiful. Wait, I want to ask if your family is literary snobs and they looked down on romance and then you win this really intellectual uh, literary nomination for your short story, did that sort of sway their perspective about your work? Uh, My short story actually wasn't for romance. I mean, it's kind of magical realism, but at that point, it was more, what they said wasn't as impactful as how I was carrying their voice track in my head. Oh. You know? So I, if that makes any sense. Meaning they were criticizing it? Well, I guess I was at the point in my life where it didn't really matter what they said. It mattered (laughs) how I was kind of reacting to this idea that this identity that had developed as a result of all the values that I had kind of been born into, if that makes any sense. That's boss up goddess. (laughs) That is saying because we grow up and everybody has the best intentions for us so this is never to shame blame or criticize it's that we are grown and everybody wants the best for us but then we grow up and then realize wait a minute this isn't really what I want yes I am successful as a lawyer but I want to be a romance writer (laughs) yes and so to have the courage to do that to shift gears like that is tremendous I commend you for that Thank you. You know, I feel like the artist path is just really, it requires a lot of courage. It requires the financial aspect of it is, you know, um, the financial aspect of it is it's kind of like jumping off a cliff. You don't know if there's going to be some parachute with Oprah calling to say you're in my book club and then you're going to be known all around the world suddenly, or you'll get this multi-million dollar book deal in your set or a movie deal you know, or Bridgerton, Shonda Rhimes calls and says, hi, Julia Quinn, we're going to be making a Netflix series. It's going to be the number one and blockbuster. (laughs) So, you know, it's, I like to call it a crapshoot. That's not a very ladylike term, but it really (laughs) is because you just don't know. You could literally hit the lottery, literary lottery, or you could be struggling to pay your phone bill. (laughs) So true. So true. Although I am a firm believer in positive thinking, Uh you know, and should I, I don't know if I should tell the story about, should I tell the story about? Yes. Okay. Um, So I think that the story of us meeting in my mind before we actually met is a good example of how... (laughs) positive thinking and visualization Mm -hmm. can create your external reality yeah as I yeah as I told you um I had seen you in a magazine and I guess it was an article talking about your meditation practice and all of your writing and it must have mentioned that we live in the same area and I'm relatively new to this area so I was thinking that's a cool woman to bring into the sister circle that I'm trying to develop and I really wanted to meet you and I think you know I wanted it with an intensity that the universe just heard and responded to because you know weeks later weeks later I get an email from you well I got the email from um Stephanie from the writers, mm-hmm. Detroit writers room, mm-hmm. asking me to be on the show, which I'm mm-hmm. super excited about with Beverly mm-hmm. Jenkins. Like, I know yeah. tomorrow she'll be on tomorrow. And the oh. program is Monday night. Yeah. I'm interviewing Beverly tomorrow and then you'll all be on the workshop together Monday evening. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and you're going to be the moderator. 
And I was like, okay, this is a perfect example of <laughs> mind impacting matter. You know? Yes, yes, yes. Thoughts and also creating reality. Oh, for sure. I'm so excited yeah. to talk with you. I hope to meet you when, you know, when the pandemic is over to meet you in person. But when you have that kind of connection with somebody, like you said, oh, I wonder if I should tell the story. And I knew exactly what you were going to say, even though you didn't say it. Yeah. So yeah. that's connection. That's beautiful. I'm so excited. Okay. So you applied that same positive thinking, that visualization, that manifestation to your romance writing career, correct? I am in the process of doing so. It's been a year since I stepped out on my path. And the things that have happened in this year, they're either angels or <laughs> ancestors or, you know. I love it. Power of positive thinking. It's, got, it's a, likely a combination of all. Mm -hmm. um, but in this year, I've been asked to do a TED Talk which I did. Right. That's yeah. right. Oh yeah. my gosh. Your Ted talk is so good. Can you talk about it? Thank you. It's a Ted talk about, um, transitions. And I figured I got this call from the producer and she says, you know, Hey, can you give a Ted talk? <laughs> so you didn't apply. You just got a call. I got a call because, you know, I used to live in New York, so I know people who are in the entertainment industry, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my dear friends is she was producing a TED talk. So she reached out to me. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Oh, I my know. gosh. I got really lucky. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. What am I going to talk about? And I finally just settled on transitions because oh. I'm kind of developing a little bit of expertise yeah. in this subject matter. Perfect. Yeah. It's so Transitions good. and trees. Transitions and trees. Can you explain that please? Um, I'll put the link in the description box so people can watch your TED talk. Awesome. That, 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 watching the talk, it's better towards the end. So the beginning is kind of a slow, slow going. It's better to the end. You'll like it at the end if you watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, why did I, you know, I felt, I feel like in order to, for me, in order to transition, one of the most important ingredients was power, like a spiritual power. And so um, in the islands and in Africa, you have these baobab trees and they're mm -hmm. prehistoric trees. Mm -hmm. Some people say that they can live as long as 5,000 years. Some people say they live as long as 900 years, but they're mm -hmm. very old mm -hmm. trees and they are revered by many throughout the African diaspora. Oh. And part of their rever they're so revered, I guess that they were, they were carried from Africa to the diaspora by slaves. And when slaves were taken, imagine being in a burning house, what are you gonna take? People took these seeds. And part of the reason the lore is that part of the reason they took these seeds is because when the trees grow, they act as bridges that can connect us to our ancestors. Oh, I have chills. Oh my goodness. What? So I, I talk about transitions and I talk about trees. And what I'm really talking about is connecting to our power through oh. the stories from our ancestors, through um, the loves of our ancestors. And um, the talk draws parallels between things that make the tree thrive and things that make the transitional journey successful. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my yeah. God, I love that. Yeah, so going back to your initial question yeah. of um, <laughs> mind over matter, uh -huh. uh, in the last year I've had the TED talk, I have, oh my gosh, the coolest thing. I joined RWA. You know oh, RWA. Romance Writers of America. Uh huh. Okay. Awesome. And 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. Talk around all these phenomenal women who are writing, who are doing it. They are producing bestsellers and they're there for you. You know, mm-hmm. they're able to, they're willing to answer your questions. Um, they're willing to look at your work. They have this uh, mentorship program that they started this year. And uh, it's a national program, writers throughout the organization applied, my manuscript got selected. So I'm working with Rome Parish for the next five months to finish up my manuscript, to get it ready for agents and editors in the summer. <gasps> oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, had a, I have a girlfriend, Sarah, and she says something like, um, step out on faith in the universe. What does she say? The universe favors the brave who step out on faith or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And, okay. Yeah. I mean, this year has definitely been proving that true. During the pandemic. That's amazing. Yeah. That is but, awesome. It is. I met so many good writers. I have two wonderful writers who I have an accountability group with. We get together every day and we write to make sure that we're, because it's easy to become a writer and then sit down at your desk and end up somehow in the kitchen. (laughs) 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 Yeah, it's true. true. It takes a lot of discipline. Um, Okay. So Tana, this is awesome. Your book is called Midnight Beacon. What's it about? Okay. Um, I can't give it. I, there's a lot. Of, uh, there's it's about a lot of things, and I can't tell you. Uh, like I don't want to do any give any plot spoilers. But uh, brought over to you, it's about a, a green architect who's up for a Pritzker when her building catches on fire this award-winning building catches on fire and she suddenly becomes the suspect in an arson case. Oh my goodness. And, you know, she's fighting to prove her innocence and there's a timeline that she's on because the uh, award committee, you know, they, they can't give an award to, a, ultimately there's a ceiling collapse. Initially, there's a ceiling collapse, and I am giving away the book. No, no, don't. Who's the hero, though? She's the hero. It, it, so she's got she's got a rush to clear her name in order to collect this award. And as she's investigating, her path crosses with an investigator. And as they are investigating, there's a love interest that's there. As they're investigating they uncover a dark family secret of magical origin. So it's a little bit of whodunit and it's a little bit of, um, you know, crime procedural and it's a lot of Haitian gods and goddesses. Oh, I love that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. And where can people find your book? They can find it. You can go to my website, tanajenkins.com, and you can sign up for the newsletter and I will let you know once it is available. Oh, okay. 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 Great. That is amazing. So your newsletter will tell us all the wonderful things that you're doing and the progress that you're making. Yes. Yes, and your yes. cover is gorgeous. It's like this smoky silhouette type figures. It's just beautiful. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Come Monday and you can see that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> You'll see her book cover on Monday at the workshop through the Detroit Writing Room. And if you'd like to participate, just go to DetroitWritingRoom.com and slash events. And I'll have the, just the link in the description box so you can participate in this amazing panel with five authors and it's the black voices series at the Detroit writing room and I'm the moderator so Tana can you talk about what it's like being a black romance writer and what what's different about that Mm, the first thing that comes to my mind which probably should not be the first thing that comes out of my mouth is the market I think if you Look at the market, the bulk of romance readers, according to mainstream statistics, are women who don't look like me, women who are not Black, 
Um, and for that reason, publishers, well, these are the statistics that a lot of publishers I'm told are influenced by. For that reason, publishing is different for a black author. I think that there are pressures that black authors are under that are not probably the same. There are probably, there aren't as many opportunities for black authors. Um, and I think that historically it's taken the country a long time to appreciate the importance of black romance, which is incredibly important, you know, um, for, for black people in this country, writing and reading was illegal for 400 years. And I think that part of the reason it was illegal was because the stories we tell ourselves have a tremendous impact on how we see ourselves. And if we were able to tell our own stories, um, we would tell ourselves as the hero and you know, for forever yes. and tell yes. maybe the Cosby's right. we didn't get to be the heroes unless it was like black exploitation. But there, you know, there are some exceptions, but it's the exception. It wasn't the norm. Mm -hmm. um, and I lost my train of thought. You were just saying it's not the norm. And when we tell our own stories, we're the hero. And that's in a world that's trying to oppress a certain group of people. The oppressor doesn't want anybody being a hero yeah. and finding their power. And then there's also, you know, regarding romance and love, there are so many stereotypes about all people of color and yeah. Black people specifically about the inability to have stable families and you know yes. statistics and I mean it's just it's a cascade of negative um, points you can make that would point to you know um, romance defying uh, the stereotypes because it's Absolutely. people falling in love and having beautiful relationships and careers your your character is an architect yes you know? absolutely <laughs> mm -hmm. and so do you feel that it's your duty to showcase positive images that can inspire perhaps the young woman who's reading the book to say, I can be that, I can be her? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that across ethnicities, and that was part of my journey into romance, you know, I went in thinking, oh, that, that genre is not important. And I came out saying, come on, kid, get real. What is more important in life than love? Love is yes. everything. How many studies do you have to read that draw a correlation between positive physical and mental health and love? You know, yes. but we're afraid, at least in, in the Western, in America, not all of us, but I think we're, un we have an unhealthy fear of being honest about that. And we don't love as well. Our capacity to love isn't as well developed as it could be. And a good romance novel can help that, you know, if you've never opened a, opened a cover of a romance novel, you, you might be, that might be um, a, a claim that doesn't land as true, but trust me, it's true. Uh, so absolutely, I think that romance books can be models for people who don't have those models in their real lives. And that's yes. most of us, you know? Yes. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. And in every story, there's a conflict, there's a villain, even if it's a villain within. And so yes. it shows strong women overcoming obstacles to get what they want yes. and make yeah. a positive impact on themselves and the world. It's beautiful. Yeah. I agree. I agree. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And it's a billion dollar industry, billion dollar industry. And there are romance authors who are millionaires because they're writing these stories and women are eating them up. And that's been the case for decades. Yes. So for anybody who tries to discredit, I mean, even the fact that we feel defensive about it right now. <laughs> yeah. 
I was a member of Romance Writers of America in the, when I first started writing novels and the local chapter meetings every month were so delightful because yeah. the environment, as you described, was so nourishing, nurturing. Yes. Everybody yeah. would share their rejection letters and you know prepare you and give you tips on what agents and editors were accepting people. And it was just an amazing experience. It is. It is. It yeah. Is. So, so what's your vision? Like, do you want to just keep writing books? Do you want to, what's your goal, Tana? I absolutely want to keep writing. I want to keep writing until I find the words that will resonate with people and move us toward world peace. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. I said it. I know it's big. <laughs> Call me delusional, but damn it. That's my goal. <laughs> I love that so much. Peace. There you go. <laughs> but world peace starts with personal inner peace. So yes. writing is a way to cultivate that peace and spread it. Yes. yes. Oh, that's beautiful, Tana. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. You're amazing. I'm so excited to talk with you. Is so are you. Thank you. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to share with somebody out there, especially who might want to follow in your footsteps in terms of shifting dramatically from one career to another to become a writer? You know, nobody does anything alone. I was on an RWA meeting the other day and one of the authors who has had a lot of success was talking about how instrumental RWA had been to her success. And I think she had said, I wouldn't be published if it weren't for my sisters in RWA. Wow. And you don't have to join that organization, but find a group, go on, uh, what is it? Meetup.com, find a group of writers, write through them. Montclair writers, look them up on Facebook. They're, <laughs> they could be flooded now, um, but there you can work with them through Zoom. Find a group of writers to give you feedback and to who are also on that path. Mm -hmm. um, craft books, cra you have craft. Look at your website, anybody who's listening, plunge into craft and look at Elizabeth's website. There are other good websites. I'm a big believer in podcasts. Um, you can find them on YouTube. That's another thing that I spend a lot of time doing is looking at the craft videos and lectures on YouTube. Do you mean uh, the craft of writing? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Our website is two sisters And I'm a book coach so I guide people through the process of writing and publishing books and we also have a writing club and we have a short story contest and our most popular short story winner who um, I interviewed a few weeks ago on my show writer talks is Joanne Demiri Kennedy who's in the Montclair writers group <laughs> what <laughs> she's yeah she said she wouldn't what? be the writer that she is if she it weren't for that group so when you okay. said that, I was like, well, small in world. New Jersey. For anybody who's watching, Elizabeth and I are in Michigan and they're in New Jersey. And that <laughs> is wild. It's, a, it's wow. a small world. And then behind you, you have a book on display that says Oregon. And my oh, sister and business partner is Catherine and she's in Oregon. So this oh. is so funny. So this is the thing that happens when you get, oh, that's gorgeous. Who wrote the book? Uh, Steve Terrell, okay. and I, and that's my character's last name. I love oh. Oregon so much. My protagonist's last name. Her last name is Oregon? No, her last name is Terrell. The Terrell. person who wrote this is Steve Terrell. Oh, okay. That's a beautiful yeah. book. That's a beautiful right. book. It's a beautiful but, area in the country. So, so Tana, and to anybody who's watching about pursuing your path, and that's what Boss Up Goddess is, is to find out who you are, what's your truth, and how can you do it? So when you do step onto that path to boss up as the goddess that you're meant to be in mind, body, and spirit, making a positive and powerful influence on the world, synchronicities begin to occur that feel magical. Tana yeah. saw me in the local magazine. She's like, I want to meet her. And then I emailed her a few weeks later. <laughs> 
and here we are. And yeah. so, and then all these other synchronicities, people we know in common, organizations we've both been in. So those types of synchronicities occur to it's the universe whispering to you, you are on the right path, keep going, yeah. right? Yes. Is that how you yes. feel? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and sometimes it's surreal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. It is surreal. I wonder, I'm like, could it be that I'm hooked up to one of those machines in the matrix? And I just imagine all of this. This is amazing. It's better than I dreamed. Yeah. And then when stuff falls into your lap, like who gets invited to do a TED talk? Usually people are clamoring, oh, you know, applying and, you know, but you got a call inviting you to do one of the most coveted experiences there are, that exists for people right now. You know, that's oh. like the endorsement, the ultimate endorsement. If you're selected for a TED talk, it's like you have a message that the world needs to hear. <laughs> It's remarkable, but I think you're such an, a beautiful example of someone boldly pursuing a new path and being rewarded for it. And the rewards don't necessarily come in that giant book advance yet, but the rewards come in these affirmations that say, yes, Tana, you are on the right track. That is so true. That is so true. Because you know what the thing is? The thing about those affirmations, so I have, and I, I'll say this out loud, I've struggled with my faith and that's not a good feeling, but the affirmations, they don't just affirm you, but they affirm your faith. And that does, for for me, it helped me. That was probably the biggest reward Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to know, to be heard, to be like I was being heard by the universe. I know that sounds kind of woo woo. <laughs> it's true though. It's so true. And yeah. and you were invited to be on this panel with the Detroit Writing Room. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> no. Amazing. How, how did that happen? That's so cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I hope all of you watching right now can join us Monday evening so you get to meet Tana. You can actually ask her questions and hear what else she has to say about romance writing and all the things we just discussed, along with the four other authors whom I'm interviewing here on the, my on our channel. So you get to meet all of them in an interview, and then you can be live with us all Monday night. So Tana, is there anything else you'd like to share? What I would like to share with anybody who's listening, what I would like to say is this is not just, it, this isn't just for me. It's for anyone who is willing to step out on this path. And if I had heard this five years ago, I would not believe it. So this is coming from someone who was a reluctant believer. Hear me, you know, <laughs> it's for you that. too. Oh, beautiful. That's beautiful. A reluctant believer in self. Self, universe, all of it, you oh, know. Wow. Sometimes life hurts and I had been hurt, you know, and yeah. And I'm sure a lot of other people have been too, but there is another, there's more out there. You can have your more. You dream your big dream and then you start to move toward it and eventually you will be living inside of it. Ooh, <laughs> let that sit. I can't wait to watch the replay of that. That was powerful. <laughs> Thank you. One of your characters can say that somewhere. Okay. Okay. It <laughs> was awesome. You should put that on the wall. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome, Tana. I wish you the absolute best success as a writer, as a woman, in everything you pursue. Thank you, Elizabeth. And thank you for, you know, giving me this opportunity to speak. It's been very affirming and oh. I appreciate it. And I love what you're doing for other women. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to be a part of it. It's my honor and privilege. Thank you very much, Tana. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you. And 
Thank all of you for watching tonight as you got to hear Tana Jenkins talk about her bold move from being an attorney to a romance writer and all of her wonderful insights about the synchronicities that occur like magic when you step on your truth, your path toward living your dreams. I'm Elizabeth Ann Atkins and I interview trailblazing women like Tana Jenkins who share their wisdom to help us all live bigger better and bolder. This show is inspired by my new book by the same title, Boss Up Goddess, and you can get your pre-ordered copy at twosisterswriting.com. And I hope you'll sign up to join us Monday evening, March 1st from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time at the Detroit Writing Room. Link in the description box so you can enjoy this amazing panel of women writers and talk about romance and Black romance and all the delicious topics that we're going to dive into about writing and romance and love and pursuing our passions. So th thank you for watching. Please do like, share, subscribe, and comment so you'll, we can hear any questions or concerns you might have about writing. I'd love to answer those. And remember, boss up goddess, you have the power. I'll see you next time. Good night.